guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're gonna be reviewing this all new updated 2022 Chevy Silverado LT. And huge thanks to Raul and the rest of the management and staff here at Furman Chevy in Brandon, Florida for making this review possible. These guys have an impressive dealership. I'll leave links to their inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Raul. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Silverado has been Chevrolet's full-size pickup since 1999. That's when the first generation was released. The fourth generation, which you see here, was released back in 2019. And here we have the finally updated 2022 Chevy Silverado. The LT trim that you see here isn't quite the base model. It's more of a value pack trim competing with vehicles like the GMC Sierra SLE, Ford F-150 XLT, or even the Ram 1500 Bighorn are all competing with the Chevy Silverado LT. Here we have 4x4 starting around 49,000 bucks. A couple additional options such as these upgraded wheels and all-terrain tires, but those are the only options plus this red metallic paint color totaling this truck out to 51,000 bucks. What do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front you notice your all new grill design for this updated 2022 Chevy bow tie right up top. That chrome strip runs almost through the center of the grill. Honestly, I'm not really digging the Silverado grill quite as much as I'm digging the new Sierras. I think the Sierras have a much better front end styling. However, this is just the LT trim. I'm excited to check out all the other trims for this updated Silverado because as we know, the front grill isn't really the biggest part of this vehicle's updates. The biggest updates are in the interior. The lighting though also updated. I'm liking the daytime running strip LED for the low and high beam functional airflow right here in the lower right corner. Hopefully I can pick it up. For you guys but for this lt trim no front front facing camera no front parking sensors either but we still get the tow hooks chrome bumper up front quite a bit of chrome for this lt trim but i'm not going to knock it because i think it actually works pretty well with this beautiful red metallic cherry red metallic paint color all the chevy or gm vehicles with this paint color look absolutely gorgeous starting with the camaro corvette even the silverado it looks fantastic as far as this wheel and tire setup we get these really nice gunmetal gray and silver contrasted 20 inch rims six piece lug pattern of course wrapped in bridgestone dueler all-terrain tires dimensions being 275 60 r20s so the 60 series all-terrain compound this vehicle should have a really good ride quality we get some felt for the wheel wells check this out so that may not be the best long term but it's still a pretty nice material splash guard up front silverado name right behind or in front of your massive massive mirrors they are chrome and black contrasted i kind of wish we had the body color that was a complaint that i had for the sierra sle that we just or slt that we just reviewed but i didn't knock it on the sierra because the chrome was a continuing theme for the slt however this is just not the case here we don't have any chrome for the window trim the door handles are body color so chevy it would be nice to get the body color side mirrors at least in my opinion i'm sure most of you guys aren't going to care but here we have these massive this massive glass that fills up the entire frame we don't get blind spot monitoring for the lt but we get a blind spot pocket and i'm not going to knock it because for example my dad's longhorn limited uh, ram 1500 doesn't even have blind spot monitoring he has a blind spot pocket so definitely not going to knock black trim for the window trim blacked out b pillar smart access for the driver and a front passenger nothing out rear wouldn't be expected though as far as the window sticker the tents back here are going to affect the visibility a little bit but not as badly as the sierra that we just reviewed we get the 2022 silverado 1500 crew lt four-wheel drive cherry red tint coat jet black interior 2.7 liter turbo high output made it to this eight-speed automatic transmission and by high output they're not kidding guys this is a four-cylinder motor making 310 horsepower 420 pound feet of torque that those are some serious numbers enough to get this truck to 60 around six and a half seconds making it just about just as quick as the 5.3 while saving you quite a bit when it comes to gas the 5.3 averages like 14 city and like 18 or 19 highway whereas this will give you 17 and 20 with 18 combined so definitely saving money at the gas pump as far as standard features you guys can pause take a look at all this for the lt we get auto emergency braking four collision alert front pedestrian braking lane keep assist with lane departure warning following distance indicator and telebeam auto high beams we get the teen driver mode hd rear vision camera even for the lt tpms performance we get the auto locking rear diff auto track transfers transfer case 220 amp alternator stability track with trailer sway control hill start assist trailering package with hitch guidance brake pad wear indicator too 
Connectivity and technology, of course, we get Chevy's all new 13.4 inch color touchscreen and the 12.3 inch diagonal digital driver information center. We get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, 120 volt power outlet in the cargo bed and instrument panel, keyless open lock and start remote start rear seat reminder USB ports, dual zone auto climate control, 40, 20, 40 heated bench seats with an armrest. I'll show you guys the bench seat up front and I kind of like it allowing this truck to carry six passengers kind of like a three-row SUV so very useful if you have a larger family but anyway we get the 10-way power driver seat uh, with the rear 60-40 folding bench seat leather wrapped steering wheel audio controls carpeted floor okay I'm not gonna go through all of those you can see all the exterior features LED reflector headlamps LED signature daytime runners rear window defogger front recovery hooks will definitely get you out of some sticky situations off-road 12 tie downs in the cargo bed we don't get a bed liner unfortunately that's probably one of my only complaints but can't really complain too much standard vehicle price 49,300 few options the 20 inch rims will run you an additional 1100 cherry red tinko 500 200 for the all-terrain tires that's a pretty good deal and since this vehicle does not come equipped with the heated steering wheel we get a 25 dollar credit and we get a 1500 dollar credit for the 2.7 turbo 51,265 for the total vehicle price Pretty good value, continuing along. The gas tank is not a push to open, but we don't have to go inside for the button. You get easy fill, which is nice. And for the turbo engine, I would recommend premium fuel, but I'm pretty sure GM does say that this engine also does take regular. Four x four badge in the corner. It says Chevrolet right up top. The tail lamps are not LED, but still look pretty nice. We get the reverse light there as well. Silverado badge, Chevrolet etched into the tailgate i kind of wish there was some type of color differentiation but i'm sure that could be added on after market rear view camera with two different lenses and zone lighting which continues along shout out Furman chevy here in tampa florida tow hitch i'll show you right here what this truck's rated to tow right here we get these wiring harnesses and we don't have the multi-functional uh, tailgate unfortunately but it's still pretty easy to access this bed because gm gives us these integrated bed steps so you just put your foot right here grab on to the top area and really no problem whatsoever to drop the tailgate all you got to do is press this button and it's hydraulically damped not electric unfortunately it doesn't go up on the way back up not the biggest deal though so here you have it no bed line or anything but we still get the 12 tie downs leds in the rear corners of your bed and your 120 volt 400 watt ac adapter to enter this bed it's not the easiest process without the multifunctional tailgate but again since we get this additional step we can just simply do one of these and it's pretty easy to get into your bed we don't get the camera for the rear third brake light but not the biggest deal stepping out from this bed it's going to be a little bit tricky because again that multi functional tailgates one of the best features i've seen in a lot of vehicles but another thing that i do like we get some cup holders or something on here so it'll keep your drinks in place if you are planning on using your tailgate for a tailgate but we'll take one more step back get a good look at this truck's rear styling and let's start this 2.7 liter turbo up and hear how she sounds All right, guys, that was, of course, the sound of the 2.7 liter four cylinder turbo sold by GM for this all new updated 2022 Silverado and huge thumbs up for the struts, even on the LT trim, because I was actually worried that it'd be a pretty tall prop rod to set up, but that's not the case. Here you have it, though, your 2.7 turbo making 310 horsepower, 420 pound feet of torque out of a four cylinder, guys, that's unbelievable enough to get this truck to 60 in six and a half seconds huge thumbs up for the motor and the fuel economy is also impressive getting 17 city 20 on the highway and these support braces will help the handling quite a bit and since we have four less cylinders than most silverados outside of the three liter diesel but here since it's only a four cylinder turbo we will save upwards of almost 200 pounds for the front end but we can shut this thing up right here take a step back get one last look at the front styling i'm really liking those light patterns but again the grill i feel like they could have done 
something a little bit better for the Silverado. The Sierra has a much, much nicer front end, just in my opinion. But anyway, taking a step over here, again, we get the smart access for both of the front passengers. Soft touch up top, really nice wood grain trim beneath, some aluminum outlining it, soft touch beneath, soft touch for the center area, and a very nice soft padded armrest. Really high quality door panel, auto one touch down for all four, but auto up only for the driver. Uh, no power folding mirrors, but they are four-way adjustable and some soft stitch material beneath. Hard plastic for the lower portion to be expected. Massive storage. Just like the Sierra, you get a foot-long, two 16-ounce water bottles. Giant speaker, too. Taking a step inside, we get a nameplate. It doesn't say Silverado or anything like that, and we got quite a bit of plastic, but not the biggest deal. Even for cloth seats, though, fully adjustable lumbar recline, drop, lift, and slide. The seats themselves typical similar to the tahoe and the suburban ls seats that we already reviewed in this channel except here we have heated seats which is a nice feature taking a step inside we can really check it out i kind of wish we had a running board this truck especially with the larger rims and tires with a little bit extra ground clearance the running board would really help at least for shorter drivers but even for me i'm having a little bit of trouble hopping back here without like stretching or stepping on my tippy toes but we'll turn this air down by a couple so you guys can hear a little bit better but First thing we notice is the steering wheel. GM has been killing with the steering wheels. However, here it's basically unchanged from the pre-refresh. No 10 and 2 bolstering notches, but it's a pretty thick rim. 9 and 3 is not bad. We get a 6 o'clock spoke beneath, and these spokes are nice for when you have your arm on the armrest and you still want to hold on to the steering wheel. You may notice that we have this old school gear selector from the previous generation Silverado. That's because the 2.7 liter turbo is only made it to the 8-speed automatic transmission not made it to the 10 speed. The 10 speed gets the new updated um, column electrical shifter. But in that case, when we have the bench seats up front, I feel like the column shifter is actually better because it allows this third passenger to actually have some space. But as far as the steering wheel controls, cruise control on the left side, four collision alert, heated steering wheel, press the button, it is actually not heated. So we got a credit because of that. But on the right side, voice commands, call settings, and this adjusts your infotainment. Right now we have 140 mile an hour Digital speedo, well, digitally illuminated analog speedo with a compass inside of it, functions as a turn-by-turn -turn when the GPS is hooked up. The center shows us our digital speedo, range beneath, gas tank in the lower right corner, cool temperature in the lower left corner. No true red line, I'm, I'm guessing it goes to about 5,700 RPM. Traffic sign recognition up top. And this screen is adjustable. We can control between looking at speed, music, heads up, or our compass so we can actually adjust the display between classic progressive which takes a kind of a while to adjust but now we kind of alter the directions in which everything is going digital shows us basically nothing so on the right we have basically what we had before just without the analog tack and analog speedometer not quite sure who would want to look at this but it is there if you want it you press clean and now all you really see is a digital speedometer and the same stuff beneath but my personal favorite would just be classic. I'm sure most of us would probably agree on that. So I'm just going to leave it right over there. Behind the steering wheel, no paddle shifters like we got on the GMC Sierra we just reviewed. No rain sensing wipers either. But still pretty nice headlight stock. Definitely nothing to complain about. And auto high beams. On the right side, we have our gear selector. Old school. If you want to check out the rear view camera, right back here. It is a high resolution rear view camera with guidance lines and trajectory. No 360. Again, wouldn't really be expected for a truck costing right at 50,000 bucks. We could throw it right back in the park. It takes a second for it to leave the backup camera, but eventually it does do so, unlike the BMW cars. But before we check out the rest of the screen, to the left of the steering wheel, we get our four-wheel drive settings, auto, two high, and four high. No four-wheel drive low, which is interesting. Electronic parking brake to the left of it, and this beneath is your drive mode select. So we can control between terrain which you need to be in four high for that. Drive mode, off-road, sport, and normal. We'll start this review off in normal transition into sport to see what the differences are. But outside of that, you got your hood latch release, tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It's not a power tilt, wouldn't really be expected for the LT trim. But as far as the screen, this is what you're paying for. This is a really impressive touchscreen, super responsive, and the plastic is still on the screen. I can only imagine how much better it'll be once the plastic is actually taken off. Really impressive touchscreen, huge thumbs up to GM. This is way more impressive in my opinion than the Ram 1500's 12 inch screen because that's a vertical screen and it kind of takes up all the button areas and 
kind of ruins it for me. I, I actually prefer the 8.4 inch screen in the RAM simply for its horizontal layout. This is an excellent, excellent touchscreen, guys. You can check out the audio sources, trailer information, trailer light test. If you're towing a trailer, you can just go through all these to see what is potentially available. My personal favorite is just look at the map at all times. The air vents are all outlined in this piano black trim, so keep your cleaning supplies at hand, but it looks absolutely excellent. Love the look of this interior. Hard plastic in this corner over here, but it's a really nice rubberized texture. Everything else is super soft, stitched. Even for this area is a nice rubberized texture. No auto dimming rear view mirror, which would be expected for a $50,000 truck, but it's only a low trim. It's not even a mid trim Silverado, so I am gonna forgive it. You can just dim it up right there. Interior lighting, which is LED. You gotta turn it on by clicking that button. The buttons beneath the touchscreen, as far as the volume dial, very satisfying click, pretty impressive. We get the lane keep assist, which you can disable, auto start stop, you can disable as well. You can drop your tailgate hazards, trash control can be disabled. You press this button and all four windows fall right down. We don't get a fifth window in this Silverado, and you press this button, the windows just stay down, but we can pick them all up manually, which is kind of annoying because you gotta keep your fingers on all of them because the auto one touch isn't on the way up for the passengers. We know that this is a bench seat to lift it up. Well, before we lift it up, actually, you get pretty decent storage, two cup holders, and a little area for your phone, super soft leather for both arms that touch it. Unlike the bucket seats, though, with the center console, this is not nearly as much space. Still pretty spacious. I would expect you to fit at least like six to eight 12 ounce cans with no problem whatsoever, but the Silverado with the buckets and the center console can fit probably two bowling balls, four two liter bottles of soda. That's just such a massive difference between consoles. But this is also functional as a seat, so check it out. You lift this up, you can fit a third person in the center. You have a third seat belt too, so everything is super safe. And since we have this column shifter, this whole area, well not the whole area, there is a pass through, but it makes it a lot more usable for somebody that does potentially sit here. So it's definitely a thumbs up in my opinion. As far as the glove box, we got two of them. The lower one, you pull the latch, it falls down nice and damped, pretty spacious. I'd expect you to fit a pair of shoes, no problem. Maybe a second if you're under a size 10, easily fit in 20, maybe 25 license plates. You press this button and the second glove box shoots up, which is a lot less spacious. I'd expect you to fit maybe two, maybe three pairs of gloves though, and that's probably why they call it a glove box. Beneath the buttons, we get this really nice wood trim with the aluminum beneath it, engine start, stop, heated seats for the back and the backslash butt. You can't just isolate the butt, but I guess you wouldn't want just your butt being here, but whatever. We get the dual zone auto climate control. You can adjust the vent speed here. Auto, of course, too. Passenger gets the heated seats as well. And unlike the Sierra that we reviewed with the heated seats and cooled seats credit, the heated seats here actually work, which is appreciated. Uh, we get the USB and USB-C port right next to it. And this all this material has a really nice rubberized texture. So even for an LT, the interior here feels seriously premium the improvement compared to the previous generation is seriously seriously noticeable but that's about it for the front seat and features of this all new updated 2022 chevy silverado lt let's check out the back seat real quick see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials all right guys taking a step in the back seat of the 2022 silverado lt up top still soft touch materials that wood trim beneath aluminum still soft underneath soft for this entire area Really soft stitch area for the armrest. Guys, thumbs up for this interior. Huge, huge job of Chevrolet. We get the auto on the way down, not on the way up. You gotta press and hold for the way up. A Little bit of storage, a lot of bit of storage beneath. You probably fit in two foot longs, 16 ounce right next to it, additional speaker. Just cloth seats. I personally don't mind the cloth, but with the, with the cloth seats, we don't get that cubby that we get in the Sierra. Uh, but the legroom is still super impressive. The seats still fall down or fold up in a 60 40 manner it's just no secret storage here like we had on the sierra this little area i guess does open up but there is no true little cubby so if you want the cubby i guess go for the leather seats we can drop this thing down though it takes a little bit of heft but i've gotten used to it by now we got the floor mats here push them to the side and we can take a step inside again it would be nice to get running boards because it's a little bit high up but wow the amount of space is truly ridiculous. As soon as we close that door, the isolation in this cabin is like a nine out of 10. Really impressive guys. You get map pockets behind both of the front seats, all the legroom in the world. The interior lighting is an LED, which is nice. No panoramic back here, not a big deal. There's really no options on this LT outside of the wheels, tires, and paint. 
no center cubby either which would be nice for the rear passengers not going to knock them too badly at least for the lt trim but what you see is basically what you get pretty self-explanatory the rear air vents are blowing from the floor usb port usb c and an ac adapter all huge thumbs ups but that's about it though for the interior of this all new updated 2022 silverado lt let's take this truck out for a drive all right guys now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the all new updated 2022 chevy silverado lt with a 2.7 liter turbo let's take it out for a drive and i've actually been waiting on reviewing this new high output 2.7 liter we've had a chance to review every other motor for the 1500 gm trucks the 5.3 countless times 6.2 at least twice and the three liter diesel we actually had the chance to review is one of my first actual dealership reviews of the 2021 gmc sierra so we've gotten all the motors out of the way this is the final one it actually has pretty good response off the line it doesn't feel like a four cylinder or like a v6 or anything it feels like a v8 from the moment you start stepping in the gas it's just you better have that air conditioning up loud because once you start hearing what the motor sounds like you quickly find out that this thing is no v8 but as far as like acceleration we'll come to a complete stop right here and try one off the line so right here on the gas boost kicks in and wow This thing is uh, not bad. That, that felt quicker than the 5.3 once the boost kicks in. Before the boost kicks in, the 5.3 has way, way, way more low end torque. But again, as soon as that boost kicks in, this thing pulls. It has more torque than the 5.3. The 5.3 has about 40 pounds of feet less torque. It's heavier, but it does make a little bit more horsepower, about 40 more horsepower. But the torque here noticeably stronger and this is just normal mode we'll throw it in the sport at some point too and see what the differences are as far as like the roundabout handling is great it feels lighter well because it's a 2.7 liter four cylinder instead of a v8 but noticeably lighter the ride quality is still excellent this vehicle is impressive guys i'm gonna throw in the pov camera and try to give you guys a first-hand look driving this car and i'll catch back with you in one sec all right guys stepping back out just in normal mode very light throttle and it feels strong you can hear that turbo whistling too as soon as you hear that whistle you know that you're about to be moving but the handling is good surprisingly so i almost feel like the v8 trucks from gm have better steering maybe because the engine is weighing the front wheels down a little bit more forcing us to feel a little bit more through the wheel but it still feels pretty good it handles the bumps excellently we can take a step right here, try out an acceleration off the line, this time in sport mode, and see what the differences are. All right, guys, we're in sport mode, off the line, on the gas. Oh, wow. Woo, yeah, it definitely felt stronger. The biggest like difference was the immediate off the line punch. Once you leaned into it off the line, you felt the stronger pull in sport mode. Even in normal mode, it felt strong, but it took a little bit longer for the boost to kick in. Just cruising along in sport though. Yeah, the transmission's more sensitive. We'll see if we can keep our overdrive. Yeah, rolling around 1500 RPM. Yeah, we definitely lose a gear, but really not the end of the world. We'll try another little half throttle acceleration off the line as soon as we get the chance right here about half throttle boost oh my gosh yeah once that boost kicks in this thing is still moving it doesn't sound like a truck the noise almost reminds me of like the new ford maverick with the two liter turbo but the power is noticeably stronger i wasn't expecting this 2.7 liter to feel this strong i mean i expected it to feel like the 5.3 but once you're moving, it feels stronger than the 5.3. However, the 5.3, no question, has a much stronger initial surge. Is that initial surge worth losing about three average miles per gallon? I don't know, you tell me. I personally love V8s. I think that you put like a nice muffler delete in the 5.3, maybe an exhaust system or a resonator delete, and it's gonna sound real good. I think I personally go with the 5.3, but if you're more about like just actual performance and fuel economy, it's really hard to argue 
<laughs> the 2.7 turbo. This thing is a sweet motor. All right, back out onto the roundabout. Handling is good. A little bit of body roll. Comparable to like the Ford F-150, not as much body roll as the Ram 1500. Ram 1500 has quite a bit of body roll, but even so, still pretty nice throwing it in right here faster than we should. Nice. This guy in front of us, he's not gonna let us have a whole lot of fun. We might have to let him get out of the way. But all right, guys, one more time right here on the gas about halfway. Ooh, it's really impressive how this thing pulls with just half throttle. You really feel that 420 pound feet of torque. So like torque wise, this sits in between the 5.3 and the 6.2 and you definitely feel it. With the lower weight, yeah, you really do feel it. It doesn't feel nearly as strong as the 6.2 because the 6.2 makes 460 pound feet of torque and 420 horsepower, which is 110 more than this car and still making 20, 40 more pound feet of torque. So the 6.2 is definitely stronger, but the 6.2 is also averaging about 14 MPGs. But all right, guys, as soon as we get the chance, we'll take a step out onto this multiple lane highway, get an opportunity to open her up a little bit more. Looks like we have the chance. Hopefully this guy doesn't drive into us. He looks like he's not going to on the gas. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, we catch up the traffic pretty quickly with this turbo four cylinder we got to turn around though head back to Furman Chevy in Brandon Florida and again huge thanks to them to, for making this review possible I've been trying to get my hands on the updated GM trucks for over a month now and it's just like such a sigh of relief to finally be able to get my hands on one because I've been waiting so long for the opportunity but anyway one more time on the gas about halfway Woo! nice I'm loving it guys I wasn't expecting to like this 2.7 anywhere close to as much as I am. If you're looking for a fuel efficient full-size truck that still packs the punch, you don't want to compromise towing, at least with a higher gear ratio. We only have the 320 gears here, so it's not optimal for towing, but you get the 373s. This thing can tow up to 9,600 pounds. Definitely a no joke motor. When I first heard about the 2.7 turbo, as with most people, you're gonna be a little bit hesitant because this is way too big of a truck, right? To only have 2.7 liters in a four cylinder, but wrong. That turbo really gets this vehicle moving. Other than that though, huge thank you to Raul and Laura here at Furman Chevy in Brandon, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below. These guys have a very impressive dealership. Inventory starting to pick back up again, and I'll definitely recommend anybody looking for a new car or truck in the Tampa, Brandon area to check these guys out. And as for Raul, other than that though, I want to give a huge thanks to all you guys for watching. Had a great time making this video. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know I have endless gratitude for all the subscribers. You know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really have a huge appreciation for all of your constant support. Probably should have picked a better time to wrap this up than while parking this pretty large full-size truck, but we'll figure it out. Again, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, Thank you so much. You guys know I have endless gratitude for all the subscribers. You know, the channel is just not possible without you guys. And I really have a huge appreciation for each and every one of your constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars or trucks you'd like to see reviewed in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.